actually what I'm doing tonight is a very basic pheasant tail and I'm going to put wire on top of that pheasant tail. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little black bead on this because when you work with wire you want to hide somewhere at the ends of the wire and the bead makes really good work of that. Okay, so this is a generic hook, size 12, black bead. <coughs> These are really no-name hooks. I bought them off eBay for a cheap price, but they look good to me. They have heavy wire. They look perfect for nymphs, although they're sold for dries. Who cares? Okay, thread. Get this started, and the first thing to do here is to put the wire on. I have two colors of wire, and you can vary, but this two colors seem to catch the most fishermen. So the people I showed to these colors were... Eskimo colors, eh? So this is the ultra wire medium chartreuse color and this is the God knows what it was but it's copper wire. And the trick to this is to try to find two wires of as close as possible to identical diameters. Because otherwise the weave is going to look kind of wacky. And you cannot rely on what it says on the label because even from the same manufacturer, so even if it's the same brand and you get, let's say, black wire, I have here some black wire, soft, black, heavy, is thinner than medium wire from the same manufacturer in copper. So you just have to take the wires in your hand and, you know, those of you endowed with micrometers and stuff, you can go really crazy with this, but, okay? So I have these two wires of reasonably matching colors, uh, matching uh, thicknesses, okay? So now I'm going to start by putting the wire in along the shank of the hook to build a sort of a flattish body, okay? So this is gonna be like an underbody and is going to run like a, in the same, I wanna create a, a flat, plane here with the two wires and the hook shank. Okay, so the, I put the chartreuse on the near side. I don't think it matters that much. You're sticking that, right? Point and I'm trying to stick, yes, I'm, yeah. that's the purpose of the bead. It, it is supposed to make my life easier. And you also don't have to measure or anything. You just stick it in as far it's as it there. goes and then you just go and hope that your, your thing. So <coughs> if you've got this the way I think it should be, you get somewhat of a flat base here for the rest of the operation. Okay? So this is step one. Straightforward stuff. All right. From now on, all I'm going to do is build a standard pheasant tail nymph. Okay? And I think you can do this with any pattern of nymph. You know, pick your favorite nymph, you can do this, okay? Now, I've taken the wire along the shank of the hook all the way to the hook bend, okay? If you just want a, a wire thorax, you can stop just at the point where you'd be tying in your thorax, okay? So you put the wire as, as far as you think you want to cover your, your pattern with wire, okay? So pheasant tail. back. So you're tying the pheasant tail and you don't worry about any sort of ribbing or anything because you're going to get solid wire on top of all of this so no need for the usual for the usual reinforcements here. Okay so just wrap the pheasant so this is going to be the abdomen of the fly. Okay. There's a bunch of bobbins. Bobbin management is a bit of a problem here. As long as you can get your wires out of the way, you can do the rest. Okay, now I want to do a little bit of a flashback here. And I'm using this is saltwater flashaboo. 
the original extra wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like this stuff because it's it covers it's the. Sorry. It's original. Yeah. No, it, I like water. I like the fact that it that it's a little wider, so you you get to cover the back properly. It's not just a little strand. Okay. So tie this in where whoops where the thorax is going to go. All right, and now I come to my favorite part: peacock curl. For this one, I take about two strands. And build a, a nice thick thorax. Again, normally I would do a, a dubbing loop here to reinforce the peacock. I wouldn't dare just putting the peacock like this, but. So you're going to tie the thorax in before you do the weave? I'm tying everything in before I do the weave. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So now I put the back. So, so far I've got a, I think this is what's normally called a flashback pheasant tail, right? Well, no, I would or, just a flashback usually is when you're doing the body with a flashback. Okay. So it, it isn't. Whatever. All right. So. The reason I want to do this is because when I try to learn to weave, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not very good at it, obviously. So I discover that with floss, you kind of cover the underbody very well. But with wire, you always get gaps. So then I thought that you know, after looking at a bunch of YouTube videos as well and seeing what people do with wire and whatnot, then I realized that actually the gaps you get when you weave with wire can be turned to your advantage because if you put it on top of a, you know, real fly, some of the fuzzy stuff is going to show in between. And that's basically how the real bugs look like. They have hard bits and then fuzzy stuff in between the hard bit, uh, the tough bits, right? So I thought, hey, you know, this is maybe, uh, other than the wacky colors, you don't really see these wacky colors on bugs, but, okay, this, uh, you can do this with black and copper or various other things. Okay, so now comes the, the weave. So essentially all I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the simplest possible weave, which is the only one I have managed to sort of learn up to this point. I'm going to weave the wire on top of the fly and that will be that. If you want, you can try to put legs and other things, but, you know, with pheasant tails, opinions are divided. Okay, to get things somewhat under control, and this is where it helps if you have a genuine, rot you know, like rotary vise. I turn this upside down. I'm going to turn it towards me, so we may have to do some fancy footwork here to, to get that. So I'll just, maybe I should also position myself a little differently. Is that on? Okay, so back is going to be copper and the belly is going to be the, the chartreuse wire. So, one bit of wire on the belly, catch it with the back wire. Now, put the back wire underneath and then move the chartreuse to the other side. Catch it on with the back wire, move it on again. And you keep on doing this, and you start to get, and here you can control how tight or how wide you want these wires to be. So, you know, how much of the underbody of the fly you want to show. Okay. And if you tie enough of these, I guess, eventually get to the point where you can control that reasonably well. Okay, so I'm going to try not to be too tight on my, on my weaving. Okay. Um, do I have room for one more? Mm, almost. 
uh, I'll just turn it around and because this is where I want to tie the wire. So just twist the two wires together, get the crappiest scissors that I have, and cut. This is too thick to be, you know, just broken off. Okay, now I'm going to mess it up again. So now I have a, the woven wire and just you have a little bit of a bump here which you just can get your scissors to to flatten it out a little bit and I don't know if it shows or not in the picture but the uh, well I'm, we're gonna circulate the uh, you can sort of see the flash when the light catches on the uh, maybe this is better so see it flashes from between the between the wires and I, I thought that's kind of a neat uh, neat little feature. Oh shouldn't be doing this anymore. Okay. What do you call it? The wire covered pheasant tail? <laughs> okay. Wire weed pheasant tail. The I, shell. I don't <coughs> maybe there is a name for it somewhere, but I I haven't, I haven't, nah, this, you know, from, nothing from what you've seen here is, is, is my idea. I mean, this is, like I said, I've, I've watched a bunch of, uh, a bunch of YouTube videos and I've seen a bunch of clever guys tying up all kinds of things and I've tried to learn how to weave and then, you know, one thing led to another. So, okay, so now this is the point where you can add things if you want to add things. So like a beard or, I don't know, I shouldn't do a beard because I'm not good at putting beards on flies, but okay, let me try. Okay, so pheasant tail again. I try Wouldn't to. that work? Like is that done with UV bias? Absolutely. Absolutely, if you have some UV pheasant tail, this is the time to use no, it. No, 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 buy it, buy it. No, 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 UV it's pheasant tail. tail. No, 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 there's a special breed of pheasants. <laughs> the UV <laughs> pheasant. <laughs> and, and these pheasants, I mean, <laughs> They're from Chernobyl. Chernobyl, <laughs> yeah, Yeah, the Chernobyl pheasant. Yeah. Oh, that's a different type of mold, I think. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so... <laughs> So. Okay, this is not very neat here, but like I said, there is this one little problem which I haven't quite fully fully solved on the on the smaller flies. What's so that? the getting this this whole thing to a really neat neat and crisp crisp finish. One one alternative is basically as Bob pointed out earlier, you know, you can do your you can do your thorax and just just do the wire on the on the abdomen and and, and leave the thorax. Yeah, then you can hide there. Then then yeah, you can so yeah you can hide it. you can hide basically everything under yeah. the uh, under dubbing or or peacock or whatever. But I try another one. For me, what I liked was the idea that you know all these weak materials that usually break apart on us once you cover them with wire. Yeah. You don't, you know, you don't have a, a a problem with them anymore. So that that was the thing that I found very attractive about this. Okay. And I've seen people do things where they just weave wire for the abdomen, they cut it off, and then they build the rest of the fly with yeah. something else. I've I've seen that as well. But this is. This is it, and I think you can try this with a variety of, oh, of things. Know. So it's 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 not so much a particular pattern because, like I said, I haven't fished this. I have no idea if this is any good. Okay, so don't just take this and say, "Wow." You don't know, see this why is... it wouldn't work like a hot bed. It especially in Swan Lake. It <laughs> might. Okay, it might. I'm not saying it. It won't, uh, but <laughs> like I said, if you could get the right colors of white, that would be the, the key. Eh? I think here the 
what, what I wanted to show was the, the idea. I thought that this is kind of a neat thing that you can try to play with and find your own, uh, your own thing, you know. This is, this is kind of early days.